But before I get further into decision day and before the midweek starts with the Sounders taking on FC Cincy, I just want to get I just want to address the taxi Fontes situation um, because once these games get started this week, from here all the way through the end of decision day, I won't be talking about any off field. I won't be addressing any off field topics or situation or controversy that has nothing to do with decision day coming up and the MLS playoffs and teams being eliminated. Now, for those who didn't know, there is a situation between DC United and Inter Miami CF last week, uh, Sunday, uh, September 18th, where Taxi Fontes is alleged to use the N word uh, towards Inter Miami player Damian Lowe. Is Damian Lowe or Damian Love, but uh, Inter Miami's um, player. And the MLS, after the game, the MLS said it was going to investigate, and that's the only word that it gave. You know, I didn't really address, I didn't really talk much about it as soon as it happened, because when it comes to these type of topics, you know, it's easy to rush to judgment and to automatically label somebody as racist and automatically label an institution as racist. If you look at the MLS, one from the outside looking in, it'll be easy for them to think that the MLS is possibly racist because they don't see a lot of black faces on the field. But in reality, a lot of American blacks are not into soccer like that. The number one sport that a lot of American black males talk about is gridiron football bas and basketball. And if hip hop was considered to be a sport, then you can add that to the list too. So, you know, the media, the mainstream media will use people's ignorance to their advantage to make it seem like the MLS is racist because there's not a lot of black faces on that field. But MLS, my suggestion to you is number one, hire an independent arbitrator just for the sake of transparency and to avoid controversy. Like if you are the only one that does the investigation and there's no outside um, investigator involved in this, it will make it'll look like you're trying to cover something up when in reality, you're not really trying to cover something up. It's just you you are the organization that has the best information and the best knowledge from the two teams about what's going on. However, if you don't hire an independent arbitrator to lead the investigation, those who are not familiar with your league, it will look as if you are covering something up, that you're trying to hide something. Number two, conclude the investigation after the MLS Cup championship. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, the investigation with the independent arbitrator should start the day after decision day. So throughout the playoffs, you are investigating. DC United is not going to make the playoffs, so they will be available to talk. And the Miami CF still has a chance to make the playoffs. So I don't know if they're going to be available to talk or not. We will find out within these remaining 13 days if Inter Miami CF will be available to talk during the playoffs. We'll just see. MLS, don't allow the disruptors to pin you to a corner like the NBA. Like when something like this goes on in the NBA, they allow the disruptors to pin them to a corner, which forces them to make irrational decisions based on peer pressure instead of the facts. There's a lot of people on Twitter that follows the NBA who don't even know the difference between who LeBron James and Kevin Durant is. In their eyes, they're the same guys. And they only follow the NBA just to follow drama and controversy. And when that drama and controversy develops, they throw so much Tweets, nonsensical tweets, tweets that's that's irrelevant to the league that has a whole bunch of lies. And the NBA, they allow themselves to be affected by that. They allow themselves to 
they allow that narrative to become true. And that's how they allow the disruptors to pin them to a corner, which forces them to make irrational decisions. MLS, because you're not popular as the NBA, you don't have to deal with that. But even when you become popular, I don't believe that you're going to be weak like the NBA. I, you do have a backbone. You have shown that numerous times that you do have a backbone. Another reason why this investigation should conclude after the MLS Cup championship is you don't want to rush to judgment. Take your time with this investigation to get the right information and the right facts. Number three, focus on the argument. Don't largely focus on who said the N-word and who did not say the N-word. We all know who the alleged culprit is. We all know that allegedly Taxi Fonta said the N-word. So this investigation should not be focused on who said the N-word, why they said the N-word. The main focus should be the argument. What was the main cause of the argument? Who started the argument? And what were they arguing about? Because they weren't arguing about who said the N-word and who didn't say the N-word. The, the topic of the N-word came as a result of the argument. The N-word that was used in the argument, the, the argument shifted to the N-word, resulting from something that the two players were arguing about before the N-word was used. I say it again. The two guys were not arguing over the N-word. That was not the main argument. They were arguing over something else. The argument shifted towards the N-word because the N-word, it developed as a result of whatever those two guys were arguing to begin with. The original argument. The N-word resulted from the original argument. I repeat, the N-word resulted from the original argument. So in this investigation, MLS, focus on the original argument. What was the main cause of the original argument? Who started the original argument? And what were they arguing about? What were they so angry about? What was it that caused those two guys to go back and forth with each other? Number four, make sure the witnesses are being honest. Sometimes when one person loses an argument, they have their buddies, they have their homeboys lie to the investigators. You got to make sure that the witnesses are being honest. This is the only way we can have clear transparency and we can find out. I mean, you can find out. You can find out who's at fault. Make sure Taxi Fontes, the alleged corporate, is being honest also because sometimes the corporate they may he may lie out of fear, just out of pure fear. Because and he has every right to be afraid. Because Taxi Fontes is a future star in the MLS. Taxi Fontes has potential to play in Europe, South America, Mexico. Taxi Fontes has the potential to choose what league and what continent he wants to play in. We all know that he's not going to play in the MLS his entire career because he is too talented. Other leagues and other continents are going to want him. But this inward situation can truly hurt his brand and can truly hurt his image. So, of course, he has every right. So he has every right to be afraid. But make sure that he's being honest. And this is how you can assure him that he'll be. This is how you can assure him that he'll be honest. And unless you cannot allow this situation to tarnish his career, because at the end all, even if he said it, we all make mistakes. And here's the thing about the N-word. I don't know how to, what the word meant in the 19th century. And I don't know what that word meant in the 20th century. But in the 21st century, that word is not used to degrade anybody. Because it's not only black males that use that word amongst each other. Hispanic males also use that word amongst each other. Inner city white males use that word amongst each other. People that constantly listen to hip hop music, they use the word because their favorite rapper used the word. And when you're constantly listening to a certain type of music every day, constantly, the words get stuck in your head. And eventually you start to talk like that favorite musician. You start to talk like that favorite rapper. That's another element that people are, are, are ignoring. They don't want to address that. Why are non-white kids using the N-word? Why are people who are not, kids who are not black, using the N-word? There's a hip-hop element to this. 
their favorite when they hear their favorite rapper constantly using the word and they're constantly listening to music where the word is used, they will say the word. And so when they talk to each other, I'm not even talking about them talking to black males. Hispanic males use that word amongst each other. When they argue with each other, they use that word amongst each other. You have, even have some black males who call white males the N-word. They'd be like, what's up? That's, that's my white, you know what? That's my white N-word. I have seen many black males refer to white males as their white N-word. Numerous times throughout my life in the 21st century. So that word has a different meaning. So this is what you have to tell Taxi. Like MLS, you have to tell them, we understand that, that this word. It doesn't have, the, whatever it meant in the 19th and the 20th century, it, 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 it doesn't have the same meaning in the 21st century. So you assure him that. And most people understand the, 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 the meaning of the word in the 21st century. It, I think it will help him to be honest. Number five, avoid talking to the media about this situation until the investigation is fully complete. The media has a tendency of creating their own narrative during a controversial investigation. MLS, don't give them an inch of a clue of what's going on. Because if you give them an inch, they'll take the full yard. If you give them a, a full yard, they'll take five yards. Don't give them any clue of what's going on in this investigation. You have to be firm with your, with your coaches and your front office and the players and their wives. Because there, are, there have been situations in sports where the wives said things on social media that they weren't supposed to say in, in American sports in general. And it really affected the outcome. In the NFL, for example, with the whole Colin Kaepernick situation, his wife said something about the Baltimore Ravens ownership. And that caused Kaepernick from getting a job with the Baltimore Ravens. There's also been a situation with Steph Curry's wife, Aisha Curry, saying things on social media that, that really hurt her husband's image. So you have to tell the wives of these players, the coaches, the front office, don't say anything about this until the investigation is up. As a matter of fact, MLS, you should only keep this discussion between those who are involved. And that's it. Number six, don't allow the situation to cause irrational decision making. Don't be like the NBA. Whenever there's an irrational, I mean, whenever there's a huge controversy going on, the NBA tends to rush to, to judgment. It's similar to what I said in advice number two, when I, when, I, when I talk about how the NBA allows controversy to force them to make irrational decisions. Don't allow this situation to cause you to start hiring a plethora of unqualified black coaches. Do we want more black coaches in the MLS? Yes, but they have to be qualified and they have to be good. We don't need, we don't want to, don't allow this situation to cause you to create some kind of Rooney rule or just some some kind of system that will that will put unqualified black coaches in an embarrassing situation. Don't allow this situation to cause you to over recruit black players, because remember, black Americans, the top sports for black Americans is gridiron football, basketball. And then after those two sports, it's probably like boxing, track and field. Traditional football, soccer is on the bottom of the popularity list when it comes to black Americans. So that's that. Um, that's all the advice I have to give to you, MLS. Um, you know, this inward situation. I'm not going to talk too much about this after this monologue, but this is this is just my advice to you, MLS. Now, at the, in the, click the link in the description box. Um, there's a there's an episode from the Boondocks. Uh, I mean, it was season two, episode 11, that addresses this, this N-word situation. And they do a better job explaining it than I do. So click that link in the description box to watch that episode of The Boondocks, and I'm out. Mr. Pedo claims the version of nigger ending in gur is the racial slur, but that he was using a different version of the word ending in ga that means the same as buddy or best pal. He insists that he was using the friendly version of the N-word. 
to better relate to Riley. I used the word. I admit it. I thought there was a difference between nigger and nigga. I, I thought I understood this whole thing, but I guess I don't. I need help. Whenever I hear the rappers, they say, nigga. It's in all the music. Look, look, look. Rap songs that use the word nigga in a positive way. There's tons of them. Look, real nigga roll call. Niggas bleed. Jigga my nigga. Niggas for life. Real niggas don't die. Shame on a nigga. Suck a nigga. Ain't no nigga. 